Hello everybody. Hope everybody's doing well today. Uh, today we have <clears throat> how the transform devotion. We're going to do supernatural protection. And then I have an article which is overcoming the fear factor uh, that I'm going to be reading from today. And before we get started, I just wanted to remind everyone, to all the thigh group, that anybody wants to post, wants to do their own Facebook Live video, a prayer request, a message, struggles, testimonies, please feel free to do so. I would love to see more and more uh, activity on the group. And, uh, but, you know, if God lays it on your heart, please obey God. That's the main thing. We want Him to have the glory in His plan to go through. Um, also, if you don't want to, uh, when you post something, you want to be secretive, there's an anonymous, um, I put it on the post, so that way if you want to post anonymous, you can. So, feel free, just whatever God lays on your heart, please share with us, please. Um, let us go in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you, and I give you all the glory, Lord. I thank you for this time to sh share your message with others, Lord. And I pray that your message go into the hearts, Lord. You get in the glory, Lord. I just thank you and I praise you. And Lord, we just lift up anything, any struggle that any of us is going through. Lord, I just ask that you pick up all the burdens off all, all our shoulders, Heavenly Father. And just show us your peace, your love. And joy. Lord, I thank you and I praise you. And just be with me in this lesson that it's strictly from you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. For the supernatural protection out of transformed. It says he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with your hands, with their hands, so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Then Peter finally came to his senses. It's really true, he said. The Lord has sent his angel and saved me. And I'm going to read the scripture. Psalms 9111. It says, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. And the end of that was from Acts 12:11. When Peter came to himself, he said, Now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. Our God is so awesome and he can get us through anything. We have to follow him and we have to allow him to get us through that. Sometimes it doesn't look good, uh, but God will get us through. He always brings good out of all good, out of anything good or bad. He uses it and turns it to his good. So remember, he's got us. Further along in the devotion, it says, This world can be a scary place. As the daily news and ads for the latest home security system keep reminding you, even children are taught about stranger danger. All this may leave you alarmed, thinking you have no one to protect you, no one looking out for you, no one keeping a watch over you. Yet, God would have you to remember that the angel of the Lord stays close around those who fear him and he takes them out of trouble. Psalms 34 7 it says the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and deliver, delivers them. And it says no human may have realized this truth more than the disciple Peter. After King Herod killed James the brother of John, he had Peter put to in prison and bound in chains. As Peter fell asleep between two soldiers, an angel of the Lord came and stood beside him. A bright light shone in the cell. The angel shook Peter awake and told him to get up. That's when Peter's chains fell off. 
Then the angel told Peter to get dressed and follow him. As Peter did so, he did not know that what was being done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. Acts 12, 9, it says that he went out and followed him. He did not know that what was being done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. And I know this sounds repetitive, but I just want you to know this is the word. It says, they passed the first and the second guards before coming to an iron gate that led into the city. The gate opened for them in its own accord. Acts 12.10 says when they had passed the first and the second guard they came to the iron gate leading into the city it opened for them of its own accord and they went out and went along one street and immediately immediately the angel left him this is although no sorry let me back up this is and as they headed down one of the city streets the angel left him that's when peter finally came to his senses he knew he'd been rescued by an angel Ain't that so good? It says, although we may never experience an angel's rescue in such a dramatic fashion, know this. God has ordered his angels to keep an eye on you, to protect and defend you wherever you go, and to comfort and take care of you wherever you land, just as they did Jesus. In Matthew 4.11, it says, then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. And then we have other translations. This is took care of him. Uh, attended to him, I'm sorry. So, and at the end it says, I need not fear, for under the protection, I am under the protection of God's angels. Oh, that's so good. Alright, let's go to this article. The article is going to be a little long, and I'm sorry. Uh, okay, overcoming the fear factor. Uh, this is by Micah Campbell, is the author. It says, worry, fear, and anxiety were never meant to be a part of our vocabulary, and yet most of us worry more than we care to admit. That are, what are you afraid of? Are you scared of waking up to an intruder in the middle of the night? Perhaps it's flying on an airplane. Maybe it's the fear of sending your child off to college. Perhaps your greatest fear is not being able to provide for your family. Most of us can find something that haunts us. And sometimes it could just be little fears. I mean, I have anxiety that keeps me held back from doing normal everyday stuff sometimes. Um, I do have a history of depression and that anxiety will creep up and I don't even know why. And uh, it's hard and you just gotta pray for, through it. This panic best describes the emotion I felt, and this is from her, Miss Campbell. I felt when the nurse rolled Jimmy out into the living room. Both of his legs and most of his fingers had been amputated. Jimmy was the father of my son's friend. Beset with diabetes, he was at the end of his life, but refused to let go. Concerned about whether Jimmy knew the Lord or not, I had phoned his wife, Juanita and asked if I could visit him. I wanted to be sure that Jimmy would meet his creator as savior and not as judge. Jimmy's deteriorating condition took me by surprise. When I saw him, I was terrified. I whispered to the Lord under my breath, Oh God, how can I minister to this man when I don't know what he's been through? Even though I was scar scared stiff, Somehow I knew God would show up to do what I couldn't do. That's exactly what he did because God has given us this promise. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that's Philippians 4.13. It says, As Jimmy and I talked, it was apparent that he knew the Father, but I sensed there was more. 
We weren't far into our conversation when I discovered a real tr the real trouble with Jimmy. He was afraid to die. I told Jimmy Bible stories about God sending angels to people in need, people just like him. Those angels had a special, special message. Fear not, for God is with you. As I shared with Jimmy, peace washed over his face as he received the message for himself. At Jimmy's funeral, his wife shared Jimmy's last moments with me. Jimmy would often make, wake from his sleep wide-eyed and call out, I'm afraid. Juanita would pat him gently and remind him of God's promise. Don't be afraid, Jimmy. God is with you, and then he would sleep again. The last time Jimmy opened his eyes, he just stared at the ceiling. His wife asked, Jimmy, are you afraid? Jimmy whispered, whispered no. I'm not afraid. I'm just looking at the angels. With that, Jimmy stepped from this world into the next. I find it interesting that while Jimmy's outcome didn't change, the way he experienced death changed because he trusted in the promise of God. I experienced the same truth in my life, and this isn't talking about Miss Campbell. It says, even though I pled with God, pleaded with God to save my first husband from death, it wasn't God's plan. Yet I chose to trust God's purpose in spite of my fear. I chose to believe that I couldn't understand. Doing so changed the way I journeyed through life in the valley of death. I had a companion named Jesus. You know, that too also got me through my son. is putting my eyes on Jesus and knowing that he's got this and he's got my son in his hands. Um, also, she was talking about where Jimmy said he's seen the angels. I had a grandmother that had on her deathbed. And I would sing to her, and then and I told her, if she seen Jesus, just go to Jesus. And she was coming to us. She didn't, you know, say or talk or anything. And then one day I told her, I said, Grandma, I said, if you see Jesus, you know, you go, you go to him. And just out of the blue, she hadn't spoken in days. She said, I seen, I seen. So our God is so good, and he will comfort us even in those times. Jimmy's story reminds me that when I'm afraid, I need not fret because the same promise God made to Jimmy, he makes to you and me. Fear not, child, for I am with you. In fact, did you know that the phrase fear not is stated in the Bible 366 times? That's one fear not for every day of the year with one extra left for those really hard days. Why does God faithfully remind us over and over to fear not? He does so because we are not created to live in fear. 2 Timothy 1.7 tells us, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and self-discipline. You and I were created to live by faith, not fear. And in God. We have all the power we need for a faith that is stronger than all our fears. You know, fear is the problem of faith. The truth is, most of what we worry about never comes to pass, but we insist on tormenting ourselves anyway. Worrying about what may or may not happen can nearly drive us crazy. A lot can go wrong in life. But God doesn't want us to become worry warts. It takes faith to battle fear and learn to live with assurance in a God we can bank on. Unfortunately, most people go through life missing opportunities because they're afraid to really live the way God intended for us to. Fear becomes a stumbling block that leaves us with regrets. Relying on our faith always allows us to live fearlessly. Uh, and she talks about false advertisement. She says, "My and this is Miss Campbell again. She says, my youngest son loves chocolate milk. 
One day, as I stirred syrup into a tall glass of milk, I noticed that the label on the bottle read, Genuine Artificial Flavor. I was shocked. What appeared to be look and taste real was actually artificial. I felt cheated and deceived. This was false ad advertisement. In the same way, the father of lies specializes in false advertisement. He's good at making our fears look real when they are not. In fact, Satan's greatest two tool for causing us to doubt God's protection is fear that God will not follow through with his promises. The enemy works hard to convince us that God is too busy to do anything about our concerns. If anything is going to be done about our situation, we'll have to do it ourselves. Like the boogeyman, Satan's spooks are all smoke and mirrors. We can easily expose his trickery by determining if there is really something to fear or if our concerns are simply fear, the word fear, at false evidence appearing real. <clears throat> this, of course, for fear is the kind of shockwave Satan uses to stun us. While the sting of fright feels real, in truth, it's merely the trickery of Satan that gets our heart pounding. It's important for you and me to determine if our fears are real or simply Satan's hocus pocus. If it's a real concern, I heed its warning. On the other hand, if my worry is false evidence, that just appears real when I know the enemy then I know the enemy is involved. You may be skeptical right now, but when you realize you were created for faith, not for not fear, things will begin to change for you. You'll learn how to rely on God's care by giving him your cares. You'll be able to identify his goodness and mercy in your life and you'll overcome your fears of loneliness and insecurity and before you know it you'll be able to say along with Paul I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me okay let us pray it says Lord thank you for taking such good care of me for watching over me and for ordering your angels to help me in so many ways thanks for this reminder that you that with you in my life, I am never alone or left unprotected, for I am your tender care, in your tender care. Amen. And that's something I want you to remember. Be transformed, because you have a purpose that will help you further God's kingdom. We all do. So don't let fear stop you. Love y'all. Bye.